kill everybody. What you can do is you can take, like, place it in that prime spot in the yeah, backpack. Totally. I'd, I'd be down. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't sign any contracts. as fast as the slowest hiker and nothing wrong with that someone's got to be slow you know to get a nice caramel on the onions before I cut the uh, peppers. Did <laughs> you guys ever do that? There's not much. Uh, <laughs> there's not much. You stealing ideas from me, Craig? What? On this angle? I just said that. Oh, up. I see, I see, I see. There's a video where it's just like, Craig Adams butt. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
how to take care of the trail. Uh, like all those weak notes, say expressive of how I know of it. Snack. I didn't bring these with me now. I forgot they existed before last year, and then we always have them as snacks. Yeah. If you taste just like <laughs> baked kernels. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I've had these like unironically like corn nuts. So good. Like the ranch flavor. Like the ranch flavor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Jackie's where I chicken live, salad. I live in a higher elevation than everyone else. So so Who is Jackie? I know. I'm getting yeah. wet. You could make a house in here. <laughs> Very easy. An emergency camping spot right there. I don't know. Now we got it. We, the paper towel trick worked really well. Green. 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 Holy macaroni. Yeah. <laughs> it's routine, <Rotini>, actually. <laughs> routine. <laughs> smells good. Smells good. Mm. That's good. That's game. good? Yeah. Okay. John, I'll keep my bear stick handy.
you still see the bears though? Uh, there's one. Oh, there's a bear behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, bear. That's this one. are quick. Uh, three points of contact, everybody. Kick step in with your heel. Uh, is that so safe certified? Uh, he violated the policy for gruesome images. Gruesome. <laughs> Jeez, you guys are really pushing it. <laughs> They're not that bad. <laughs> there was like nothing. So in San Diego, growing up, like I had all my childhood friends that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. We're still friends, so I hang out with them all the time. So it's kind of weird to do something on my own. No wall. And to be honest, we, we don't need as much time going back because just once we get past the snowfield. It's totally fine to use a flashlight for, I don't know, it's fine to do Yeah. You can have a snow. You see that up there? That's the top boy. Let's go. Good steps. Looking pretty cool. So you've never been up here? to pay good, good stuff with chocolate. Good stuff. 
I got some jerky. I don't even know what I brought. I got some peanuts. Full set. <laughs> we got a skier. There she goes. <laughs> He's gone, he's gone, yeah. Thank you. Turns out we're scary guys, we're real scary. Successful. Yeah. Thank you. That's fine. Yeah, 
<laughs> okay, welcome back. That was hiking 40 miles in the Enchanted Valley of Washington Olympic National Park. We started on June 6th, 2022. A big group, uh, a group hiking trip with 12 of us, nine subscribers, myself, and two hiking guides. One of my firsts. I'm going to talk all about that experience. And this next section of the video is a behind the scenes of how I liked the hike, uh, how I made this video, uh, my experience doing one of my first group hiking trips, uh, as well as advice for you. If you are thinking about going to do the same hike, uh, I can help you out. <laughs> I'll give you some advice. But first, a word from our sponsor. These are the Open Run Shox headphones using bone conduction technology, <laughs> meaning that they don't really go in the ear. They just kind of sit on the outside uh, and the sound just somehow gets in there. <laughs> like everyone who puts this on, it is surprising. You know, it's kind of counterintuitive, but it works. You know, without going inside your ear, it still gives you premium sound. Uh, it stays cleaner. It just kind of sits on your ear and, uh, you know, doesn't really fall off. It's really good for endurance, outdoor, active stuff like running, hiking, walking. I've been using these uh, for my little 5K runs around the lake here in Denver uh, with Sasha. And yeah, good sounding eight hours of battery life. They charge up pretty quickly. And especially when I'm hiking by myself, I'll have some moments when I want to listen to some music or podcast or audio book. So uh, great for on the trail. And if you click the link in the description down below, you can check them out yourself. And one of the best ways to support me is to support my sponsors. They're helping me to make more videos and to do what I love. So thank you so much, Shocks. And let's continue on with the guide. So you may be asking, why is the solo hiker doing group trips? This is a new thing that I'm trying out. I have a couple more scheduled for the year. This was a big test, especially because we had a group of people from all over, um, a lot of new hikers, people who hadn't really done sleep outside, carry your own weight backpacking. That was okay because we had the two guides. It wasn't all on me. Uh, Derek and Jordan uh, definitely took uh, care of everyone. I was able to hike and enjoy myself and shoot the video, but then also hang out around a campfire, enjoy amazing meals, get to meet everyone. It was such a different experience and I think it's good for me. It's not always good to just go do what you think you should be doing. It's good to step out of your comfort zone and not just always doing solo hikes, I think is a good thing down the road. I've got all different types of hikes scheduled for the rest of the year, a couple more group hikes, um, and this was the most intense backpacking one. Uh, I do have a Peru and a Nepal hike scheduled, and we're screening all of those people because it's going to be much more difficult, longer, high altitude, and we're gonna be schmoovin moving fast. And then the other group trips I have are more sightseeing uh, with day hikes. So there's no sleeping in tents, there's no carrying your own weight. So a bit easier. Um, but first let's just go through the days, the itinerary, and uh, I'll share my experiences. So on June 5th, we met at the airport. All but one of us made it on time. So we took who we had over to uh, Olympia on a shuttle. We met with our wildland trekking company guides, Derek and Jordan awesome dudes. And for this trek, uh, the company provided packs. So we fitted everyone. I think Sam and I, maybe one or two other people brought our own packs. Um, Sam and I had hyperlights, so we kind of had to put bear cans on top because they're smaller. Everyone had very, very large packs. And I think that helped because we were carrying a lot of things for this trek. It was five day, four night. We had a lot of food. Everyone had their own bear can. We had a big selection of snacks to choose from and we grabbed whatever we wanted for ourselves uh, to carry. And then we went out for dinner. All right, people, is it cheese? We got the whole gang here. Yeah. Cheers, guys. The next day we started out early with snacks as we loaded the trailer. 
with everything we needed and then drove two hours into the Olympic National Park area. We stopped to see the world's largest Sitka spruce tree. Very fancy, very big. We packed and divided our gear, did some final checks, handed out the bear cans last, and we were ready to go. The weather looked good. And as long as it wasn't raining, I feel like everyone was pretty happy and excited to hit the trail. Uh, the initial, <laughs> you know, the people were not used to carrying packs, uh, especially ones that were this heavy. And at the beginning of the hike with all the food, uh, you're carrying a lot of water weight, extra weight that's going to be consumed. So this is the heaviest moment. And people were like, Whoa. But we approached the national park from the south, going up into the Enchanted Valley area. Um, and this first day was not too bad. We had uh, definitely some elevation gain for this little bump right at the beginning, but everything else was just kind of a slow grind uh, with not too much grade going up. Um, but we were definitely going up in the valley. We ended up doing about 9.2 miles as far as all trails is telling me. I don't know. You know I, I would like to cross-reference uh, different devices and ways of tracking mileage. And then again, you know, I'm going back to get the camera. I'm doing zigzags. I just keep this rolling all day. So, uh, you know, take, take the elevation gain <laughs> and the length uh, with a grain of salt when it comes to all trails. Our pace was uh, gingerly. <laughs> Does that mean slow? I don't know what gingerly means, but we were taking uh, spots to take breaks uh, frequently. We were going nice, slow, and steady, but man, we were you know in the thick of it. This is some rainforest, temperate rainforest vibes, very thick, uh, covered, you don't really have to worry about the sun too much here because you're in a thick valley uh, with lots of water. You know, it was kind of early summer, so the streams were a-flowing. There were some river crossings, and we eventually made it to our campsite. I believe we passed one campsite. Yeah, or maybe around here. But then, uh, what was it? O'Neill Creek is where we stopped. And people were just excited to, like, start opening tents and uh, get a fire going, which we did. It was so nice to like not be in a drought or a fire restriction area, um, especially when you have lots of people. It's just fun to sit next to the campfire and uh, that's kind of what you do. <laughs> I think we might've arrived at like five and it gets dark around nine. So that's a lot of time to just set up your tent, hang around, throw a Frisbee, cook some food, light a fire, and uh, just vibe, just straight vibe out. And when I hike, I am by myself. So there's no one to talk to. There's nothing really to do other than to hike. So that's why I do big mile days and I start early and I end late because I'm trying to get the sunset colors as well. And when you're doing valley hikes, there isn't really good light in the beginning and end of the day uh, because you're down in the shadow, unless, you know, compared to if you're on a ridge or a peak, um, there's more views and sunset colors. So, uh, you know, the light is kind of the same all day and, um, yep. Good first day. Day two continued up the valley. I mapped just a, over 10 miles and just over a thousand feet elevation gain. I doubt that's correct. That seems like too much, but who knows? Once again, grain of salt. We, uh, packed up our tents, headed out. And I think this is when we saw our first bears. Um, there was almost one to two bears every day of this hike. The bears live here and they're black bears and they're super chill. So right now we're just being respectful of this really slow hiker in front of us. <laughs> He's chill, we're chill, everything's chill. But he is a little chunky and a little slow. <laughs> And got the whole caravan behind us. <laughs> and this big boy keeps looking over his shoulder being like, hurry up, what are you doing? Nothing too drastic, but we finally made it into this different area. You can kind of see a little bit of a different vibe here. It opens up into the Enchanted Valley, uh, one or two river crossings. And then we started to get our first views of like White Peak, 
mountains. There was still a lot of snow on the peaks, even more than what it's showing right here, for sure. Like the snow probably was all, this was all probably snow. I don't know if you can see it on this map, but yeah, we passed the house, the building uh, that the two brothers made back in the day. Oh yeah, it's like right there. You can see uh, set up. Uh, we were a large group, so we had to take you know, a large space at the campground, but there were other people hiking, uh, but it wasn't, wasn't too crazy. This third day was what it was all about. You know, finally getting into some altitude, uh, into the snow, starting to see views and just trying to get to this pass. Uh, there is a lake up here and then you can kind of touch and see the glacier up higher uh, if you make it up the switchbacks, but we would quickly come to realize that it was more difficult to go up with the snow. And this was a lot more elevation gain. Uh, I think we hit snow like right around, well, this was a big stream crossing. Most people took off their shoes. I just goaded straight across. But yeah, you can start to see the craziness that is us trying to find the pathway through the snow. The snow is tough because you can't really see the trail sometimes. And um, yeah, making our way kind of across the slope until we reached this right here. This was very steep area. And <laughs> you might be wondering, why didn't we use the switchbacks? We didn't know, we couldn't see the switchbacks. And if there's just a straight field slope of snow, it's sometimes easier just to make steps and go straight up. And that's what we did. <laughs> and then we slid down. So uh, snow changes everything. And I think right around here is where we got everyone up there. Um, but people are starting to lose gas uh, because it was tiring going up in the snow. If we just had clean trails with the switchbacks, I guarantee everyone would have made the pass. But it was getting kind of sketchy up here. Uh, this was an avalanche area. So you could see, you know, there's a couple streams. You didn't want to fall into a stream through the snow. Um, so I totally understand if people didn't want to go up this sheer ski slope. But we made our way over uh, half the group, six of us plus a guide. It was so nice having two guides because we were able to split up the group. And then we pushed up this last slope right over into this pass and then had you know, somewhat of a view on the other side. It, it was nice to just accomplish getting to this like as a goal. Um, and if I was by myself, I probably would have had more time. I would have started earlier. I would have been going faster. So I might have slowly tried to make my way up just to see this, this view. And it would have been, you know, similar but better views up higher. Uh, but we were running out of daylight and people were tired here. So we made our way down, sliding down, so fun, sliding down in the snow, oh, it was so fun. And quickly just goaded all the way back, had a hot meal, the bears were waiting for us. Man, the bears were there when I woke up. Like I opened my tent and people were like, you know, there's a bear behind you, right? I was like, uh, oh yeah, okay, there's a bear there. Um, they were kind of just hanging around this whole area and where we were, being careful to, you know, not leave any food out. Of course, do the whole bear can thing. Um, but yeah, they definitely just hang out in this area. And the last two days was the escape. Um, I think it rained uh, starting that night. So this was day four. Uh, we had a whole day of rain. So we had breakfast underneath the trees with the tarps just to kind of stay dry. And then we reluctantly set off in the rain the entire way down, um, just under eight miles uh, all the way down to that first campground that we stayed at, O'Neill Creek. Still raining. <laughs> so we set up tents in the rain, set up tarps in the rain. And this was the first day that we couldn't have a fire because uh, we set the tarps up over that sitting area and everything was just too wet to burn, really. Uh, so we didn't even try. So this was a bit cold, <laughs> a bit sad. Um, yeah, setting up a, 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 a tent in a downpour is no fun because everything is wet and you just got to get it done as quickly as you can. But we did. And we kind of huddled around our fake 
non-existent fire and uh, ate our food. And I think we went to bed with it still raining. So it was a full day of rain. I feel like it's impossible to go to the Enchanted Valley without rain, at least for some of it. So, you know, we, we did our rain day. But the last day back out to the trailhead and the cars, man, we woke up. It was sunny, beautiful. We were just so happy to not have rain. We dried off things as much as we could. Uh, I think we had eggs and hash browns, which will brighten anyone's day, and made our way down. So just under, you know, about eight and a half miles, down, down, down with this little hump again, and we made it. It was very nice to, uh, you know, just complete this thing. It was five days is a lot to be out there. So it was, it was a thing. So if you add up all those miles, I think it's just under 40 miles. Um, and you know, zigzag back and forth to the camera. It's, it's with an asterisk. So when I say hiking 40 miles, it's just to round up or near to the nearest the good looking number 40 is a good number so why not so bears let's talk about how many bears we saw on this trek this was probably the most bears i'd ever seen even compared to alaska uh, they were all black bears some bigger than others maybe they were all the same bear <laughs> i don't know um but yeah one to two bear sightings at least per day and they were so chill um very chill just lumbering around minding their own business they would kind of just look at you and then just get back to munching on berries and roots or whatever they're eating. The meals on this trip were just oh, so good. Oh my God. I did not expect our two guides to pack the fresh fruits, vegetables, meats every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just something special. We had sandwiches, charcuterie. We had Middle Eastern food, lentils. We had chicken salad, Jackie's chicken salad. We had spinach wraps and pasta with pine nuts and pancakes, oatmeal, coconut, uh, yogurt. And man, it was just every meal was just what you were really looking forward to. And so good, so very good. But for sure, the OG of the trip was a last minute purchase at REI that the guides picked up. Uh, I forget the name of it, but some hot sauce. We almost went through the entire bottle because everyone was adding it to their thing and it was hot. There was so much water, uh, so easy, almost too much water. <laughs> you could just stop at any stream to fill up and filter water to drink, which is what I did. Um, but there were some stream crossings. Uh, this trail had bridges, obviously for the really big intense like river crossings but the streams coming down from the mountain slopes into the river uh, we had to cross um, i never took my shoes off uh, because if it's a bright sunny dry day uh, and you have trail runners and kind of thinnish socks they dry within a half an hour if you just keep hiking so that's what i'm used to that's what i like um, but yeah the mud was probably the most annoying thing uh, with it being a rainforest with mud, uh, you know, it's on the trail. You want to try to stick to the trail as much as you can. But if it's just a muddy minefield, it can be tough sometimes. The weather was good. Um, it might be better later in the summer. But like I said, it's a rainforest. So you can expect it to rain at least one of the days. I feel like we got lucky. I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. Having the rainy day makes you appreciate all of the other non-raining days. And the umbrella, so clutch. I knew this was, it's time to shine. If you have a rainy forest, that's the perfect time for an umbrella. Because if it's raining and alpine with exposure, the wind will usually get you. You'll get wet from the side and the umbrella breaks and whatnot. Uh, but this is the perfect time to have an umbrella to stay dry. Uh, and I did mostly the snow. Yeah, it was early in the season and we had a lot of snow. Uh, we would have been faster on that third day if we didn't have the snow, but it was okay. It added some flavor, some interesting stuff to that little day hike that we did from the Enchanted Valley up into the pass. Wildland Trekking provided us with micro spikes, which was fantastic. We absolutely needed them. We made a lot of snow steps. Uh, I think at one point towards the end, we were just like chanting good steps, good steps, good steps. 
and I was a bit tired. You know, the person in the front is doing most of the work. Uh, so we definitely traded off and I'm lucky we had some strong hikers to help make steps. Pushing up to the pass was definitely something that, uh, I didn't bully anyone into doing. I kind of just really aggressively motivated people to keep going. Uh, I think at multiple points we were like, maybe we should head back. Like we're kind of running out. We set a couple timings. Uh, so we're like, if we're not to the pass by this time, we're going to head back. Um, so we definitely pushed with the six or seven of us towards the end there. Um, but I'm glad we did it. Uh, we stayed safe. Uh, we were smart and uh, we accomplished our little made up goal of reaching it to the pass. Sliding down the snow. So fun. Uh, oh, go right, go right. Ah! <laughs> My overall impression of the hike, uh, if I was doing this by myself, uh, it would have been quicker. You know, it's just always easier to go at your own pace, obviously, and to go quicker when you're by yourself. And like I mentioned, uh, without campfires and people to talk to, I've got nothing else to do but hike. And personally, I like to sweat when I go uphill. Uh, so I would be pushing myself all the way up to the Enchanted Valley from the trailhead on the first day, probably. Past the Enchanted Valley, uh, I think, is when it starts to get really beautiful. So I would have tried to get a campsite somewhere up there and go over the pass down and uh, around uh, weather permitting and snow permitting. Uh, the snow would have slowed me down. I probably wouldn't be doing 20 mile days like I usually do. And I definitely would have exited out from the Enchanted Valley area, the, the house, back to the trailhead all in one day. Cause I think that was sub 20 miles uh, downhill. And when it's, when I've kind of captured the footage and done everything I want, like the exit back through a trail that I've already been, you know, I'll just, I'll put some, uh, put some music on and just goad it down the trail. But yes, I highly recommend anyone interested in doing this uh, to go and visit the Enchanted Valley. It's a national park, so no drones, no dogs. Uh, there's bears, so you have to follow bear can regulation, of course. Do the research and figure out everything you need to do before or hire guides like wildland uh, trekking. And um, yeah, have fun out there. Special thank you to the two guides who helped out and all of the subscribers who signed up to come on this trip. It was lovely getting to know you. Some of y'all were filmmakers, making your own videos. Um, I hope this, you know, you learned <laughs> more about hiking and this inspires you to go out and do more stuff on your own with other people. Uh, and of course, I'll have more group trips um, coming up. So if you want to hang out again, I'm down. We definitely have some inside jokes and stories from this trip, that's for sure. So yes, uh, maybe a couple of updates. Um, a lot has changed uh, since my last upload, which I believe was Peru, the Salcante Trek. I am working on a home vlog and I didn't capture much footage other than Instagram stories, but Mika, Sasha, and I took a U-Haul, moved from New York all the way over to Denver. You know, it was like a three or four day road trip in a U-Haul, which is always interesting in sleeping in hotels and seeing the middle of America. Man, ac crossing the Great Plains, that's always a thing. We are adjusting to life in Denver. The UV index is strong. The mountains are beautiful. It is flat. And a lot of people are outside with their dogs doing Denver things. We're getting there. I think we have one more Ikea delivery before we build and make this home more homely. Uh, but we are adjusting to life here and hoping to make friends. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be reaching out to do some kind of coffee thing. Um, but yeah, we live in Colorado now. We're getting our Subaru Crosstrek. I feel like it's just what you have to do when you live here in Colorado uh, very soon. And you know that'll help so much. It's kind of impossible to live here without having a car. Um, so that'll allow us to do road trips, go out into the mountains and to see people and see more of, you know, Denver, not in walking and Ubering distance. So really excited for that. And in the home vlog that I'm working on, we're, we're gonna show the space, life here, uh, talk about the move 
and I think it's going to be like a longer video, uh, sit down, kind of podcasty with reference, like B-roll, photos, videos, um, on screen, uh, but like talking through our experience, Mika and I. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, we've got some more videos coming up. I'm hoping to be in Ecuador within a week. Probably gonna go to try see Curtis, surprise him on the CDT because he's passing through Colorado right now. Um, so that might be in a couple days. And I'm just excited to get Mika and Sasha out into the mountains because that's kind of why you move here. You know, it's it's kind of a little bit of a letdown if you move here from New York and then you just stay in the city. Uh, the real reason, the beauty is taking road trips into the mountains, into nature. Uh, which is just right there. You know, you can just see the mountains waiting. Um, so once we get this car, uh, we should be more social and just going out and doing more fun things. So I'm excited. I'm optimistic. But thank you so much for watching. And uh, let's cut to some bloopers. Hi, puppy. You and Sean <laughs> Can this be the transition? <laughs> 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 Dude, my if you if you have seen my feet at times. It's already cut it. It's already walking back. <laughs> <laughs> Trail fashion. Wow. Oh!